Yes, this morning, NASA will launch a new unmanned rocket for a nine-month journey to Mars. Its mission to find out if life exists or may have existed on the planet. On board is a new generation of rover known as the Curiosity. It is a nuclear-powered rolling laboratory about the size of a car. It costs more than $2 billion, and the rover can drill, dig, and even sniff the Martian landscape in its search for life. Join us from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with all the details of CBS News Space Consultant Bill Harwood. Great to have you with us, Bill. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So what is the curiosity looking for in terms of whether there is life or there may have even been life on Mars? Well, it's really not looking for life itself. What it's trying to find out is, was Mars ever habitable, either in the distant past or even today for microbial forms of life? And they're also going to be looking for carbon compounds. You know, to have life, as we know it anyway, you have to have water, you have to have energy, and you have to have carbon compounds, organic compounds. They know water was there in the past, and it's still there in the form of ice. So by looking for organics and trying to answer this habitability question, uh, they're hoping to be able to focus future missions to actually go and see if life ever actually evolved on Mars or even still exists. Viewers are getting a look at what this rover, the Curiosity, looks like. It's about the size of a small car. And reports are saying takeoff is looking like it's on schedule. Landing, however, and we've just been seeing some images of what landing might look like, could be a lot more difficult. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really an amazing mission. We take these missions for granted, going to other planets and doing all of these things. But this is a case that is really a challenge. You know, the, the, the real issue here is how do you get a one-ton, as you said, car-sized rover down to the surface? If you do it in the traditional sense where the rockets are underneath the payload, then this rover is elevated. It's up on a platform, and then it has to roll off. The platform might be tilted, depending on the slope it comes down on. So they came up with this sky crane technique where the rockets are above the rover. They lower it down on a, on a bridle and literally set it down on the surface on its wheels ready to roll. It's a great idea, but they can't test it in Earth's gravity completely. So hmm. really, it's going to come down to how does it work when it gets there. And I think everybody's going to be on the edge of their seats. No oh, kidding. Absolutely. No question about it. What does this all mean if it works for the future of space exploration? Well, certainly it's, it's on a couple of fronts you can look at it. Scientifically, being able to answer a question, was Mars ever habitable? And perhaps coming up with missions that could go look for life as it might exist today or in the fossil record, I think philosophically that's a huge achievement, uh, depending on how, either way, depending on how it plays out. And this landing technique could really have some, some payoff down the road for manned missions. Getting heavy payloads to the surface of another world and then being able to drive around and not be stationary is a major engineering challenge. And so I think this sky crane technique holds a lot of promise for that if they can make it work. Bill Harwood, fascinating stuff. Thanks so much for joining us. Sure.